Major Mohammad Shah uh, has just joined us on the broadcast. Uh, morning, Major Shah. Thank you for joining us on NewsX. From the morning, we have been discussing the security apparatus of Sri Lanka. Uh, what really Sri Lanka unfortunately slipping into a situation like this, which we were anticipating a few hours ago, would mean for India. But right now, it looks like all of that has taken a backseat. The full focus is on the streets of Sri Lanka. End of the day, the onus, would you say, on Vikrama Singhe, if Rajapaksa is in hiding, why doesn't Vikrama Singhe tender his resignation? Because according to the constitution, uh, and that's what the people fear the most, with Rajapaksa gone, the last thing they want is for the Prime Minister, that is Mr. Vikrama Singhe, to become the interim president. You are absolutely right, Minashi, bang on. And you know, uh, right now, uh, Mr. Vikrama Singhe has uh, asked for the curfew to be imposed to keeping the law and order situation in mind. It's just getting out of hand. Now, since you mentioned about the constitution of Sri Lanka, Minashi, firstly, I commend and I appreciate the effort that you are taking and you have been uh, bringing to our viewers the fresh updates. You and your reporter over there and you know, you have been doing a fabulous job on the on channel. So I thought, being a panelist on your channel, I should do justice to the hard work you are putting in and I read up, I sat up the entire night reading the constitution of Sri Lanka and try understanding it. Now what my understanding told me, I, very interestingly, I came about I came across article 40 of the constitution of Sri Lanka, that caught my eye. Now the article 41a of the Sri Lankan constitution, it was, if the office of the president shall become vacant prior to the expiration of the term of the office, then the parliament shall elect a president, one of the members, who is qualified to be elected to the office of the president. Any person. Now, so succeeding to the office of the president shall hold office only for the unexpired period of the term of office of the president vacating of... Now, which meant also for a month, we, there were talks that the speaker, Mr. Mahinda, would take over as the interim president for a month. Until then, the whole uh, political party jumped in and Vikram Shinge jumped, jumped through this his, his hat in the ring, tried to be the president. The president, Mr. Shinge, I think it's a, Mr. 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 The, uh, the Rajpaksha, I think it's a disgrace when you see a president throwing, flying out of the country and, and, and you know, ironically, I, without sounding uh, political about it, I think it is a further disgrace because Rajpaksha who is dubbed, who is uh, known to be actually, in other words, an Islamophobic is going and taking refuge in Maldives, which is an Islamic country again. So what an irony. Secondly, he says by evening, once he reaches his final destination, he will not end his resignation. Well, I frankly have my doubts. I Because he has not lived up to his promises to his countrymen, he will, to his promises of resigning, to, to escaping, what? No. And also the 40B of the constitution of Sri Lanka says that such election shall be held as soon as possible which means on the 19th again there would be a meeting and 20th hopefully I mean that's that's a talk which is uh, which has been going on and in the case later than a month from the date of occurrence of the vacancy such election shall be uh, through secret ballot and by the absolute majority of the votes cast in accordance with the such uh, uh, procedure of the parliament. Now, they are under complex situation. Now, what I'm saying is, the point I'm trying to make is, even if an interim government comes into play, firstly, the economic crisis cannot be sorted out overnight, but yes, it will certainly help the tempers which are flaring up in Sri Lanka. It will help pacify the protesters. Can you beat it that they are activists coming to the president's house? And they are saying, don't come here, there's no space, go the activists doing that. I mean, it is really, I mean, what situation have they reached to? Now, provided also that if such vacancy occurs after the dissolution of the parliament, the president shall be elected by the new parliament within one month of its first meeting. Hmm. So earlier there were talks of the speaker, Mr. Mahinda, becoming the president, but that may not, that's unlikely to be the case now. Now, also the Article 40, B or C say that during this period between the occurrence of such vacancy and the assumption of office by the new president, the prime minister shall act in the office of the president and shall appoint one of the other ministers of the cabinet to act in the office 
of the Prime Minister. Now, that is the reason why the Prime Minister is throwing his hat in the ring to be And the you know, sir, since now, Major Shah, do you think, does it look likely it's going to happen? Because one thing is very clear. Rajapaksa wants to reach a safe haven. Before that, there is no chance he's going to submit his resignation in writing. He wants that immunity, which the power as the President gets him. And Vikrama Singhye, what do you think is his game plan? Because many are now suggesting and suspecting that Vikrama Singhye perhaps wants to be the interim president himself and that's why he is shying away of uh, sending in his resignation in writing. You are 100% right and I commend your uh, research and your knowledge on this. Actually, it's really truly impressive because, you know, also if the office of the Prime Minister uh, then be vacant in Sri Lanka, then the Prime Minister is unable to act the speaker shall act in the office of the president. But that is not going to be the case over here because of various reasons. Now, the Article 40C2 also, the provisions of the constitution relating to the president, other than the provisions of paragraph 2 of the Article 32, shall apply now. Which means now there is going to be, if we put all of them into consideration, there is going to be a lot of complication in Sri Lanka because the situation is not as simple as the speaker just coming over and becoming the interim president for a month. Though Mr. Mahinda, he was, and he also gave, it was contrary orders. He gave some time back, about two days back, he said the president has left the country, then he retracted his statement. And so it is a very, very complex, a very, very precarious situation in Sri Lanka. And this is a time when the political parties, all of them, are trying to capitalize on it. Now, in, the, also, the uh, Article 40C3 says the Parliament shall, by law, provide for all matters relating to the procedure for the election of the President by Parliament and all other matters necessary or incidental thereafter. Which means now it is actually everyone, the other aspiring politicians will jump in the fray. What is the difference, tell me one thing, what is the difference then between the politicians there then and China then? China will try to see the weakness of Sri Lanka and instead of helping them out, instead mm. of building them out, they will actually take advantage of the situation. Mm. Actually, if you have a friend who is in trouble, Okay, I take your point. Major Shah, you know, we were speaking about the state of emergency which has been declared in Sri Lanka. People are raising a lot of noise about it, claiming that it's only the president who can uh, call a state of emergency. What powers did the prime minister use when he did call the state of emergency? End of the day, it seems very clear that the politicians uh, are acting in a high-handed manner. Uh, the imposition uh, of emergency is only Fanning these protests further is only antagonizing the people further. End of the day, what Sri Lanka needs is political stability, something which you've been emphasizing from the morning. Absolutely, Minakshi, bang on. And I totally agree with the Mr. Sanjeev Srivastav. He's bang on there. Right? You know, they should honor the constitution first. Everything else will fall into place later. But the moment they jump the gun and there are 50 people, aspiring politicians, aspiring leaders, not a single out of 50 or more than 50 in fact, out of them all, not a single charismatic leader who will actually bail them out from the situation. And no one can right now. They have to do it collectively together. You know, when actually in the army, for, de for a, de a deserter, a bhagoda, jo bhag jata hai, who doesn't fight, who doesn't have the courage to face the enemy, you know what the punishment it is? There's the punishment is you are liable to be shot by your own men, which means if a person gets scared and runs away and shows back towards the enemy, the own troops, the own team can shoot that person down. Legally, I'm talking, I'm, I'm telling about. It's allowed. Why? Because fear. It is contagious. It spreads. It will only go, go on further. In fact, Khalil Gibran, the famous writer, he wrote a very fine poem on fear. And since Sri Lanka is an island surrounded by water, Hmm. If you permit me, I would recite, like to recite four lines which are very apt for the situation right now, Minakshi. Please go ahead, please go ahead, sir. Okay. Minakshi, it is said that before entering the sea, the river trembles with fear. It looks back at the path she has traveled across the peaks of the mountains, the long winding roads crossing forests and villages. And in front of it, it sees an ocean so vast that to enter seems nothing more but to disappear forever. But there's no other way. The river cannot go back. Nobody can go back. To go back is impossible in existence. 
the river now has to take the risk of entering the ocean because it is now that fear will disappear and the river will know it's not about disappearing into the ocean but of becoming the ocean so i think if the sri lankans if the majority over there the people over there hmm. own the bull by its horns and people do not i would urge that right now is not a time to do political drama over there for politicians to come and throw the hat in the ring let us because it is our we will not play big brother to sri lanka that's one thing for sure but we will play we are concerned because they are neighbors and we always had very good relationship with sri lanka we are concerned about that so yes. we out of concern we are saying that please hold strong and i am sure that this too shall pass well very eloquently uh, put uh, you know sanjeev shrivastava we were speaking about uh, one of course our well wishes uh, as major shah Uh, of course uh, expressed via the poem which you read out as well uh, for the people of sri lanka we do hope that the situation doesn't deteriorate further uh, but the signs don't look very optimistic don't they sir for you must so i think uh, i completely agree with you what you just said and uh, what major shah said india is very much there uh, with them but ultimate solution will have to will have to be found out by the people of sri lanka the new dispensation of sri lanka Mm. All right, uh, Sanjeev Shivasa, stay with us. Uh, you know, Major Shah, would you like to take that thought forward? Far as India is concerned, India is an all-weather friend of Sri Lanka, but we don't want to impose, of course, our views on Sri Lanka. India has made it very, very categorically clear: no intention of military intervention. Uh, we did not help Rajapaksa uh, escape. We are with the people of Sri Lanka. We will stand by the government. The the whoever you know becomes the next president, whoever the people of Sri Lanka choose. end of the day india only there to help sri lanka not like china we are not eyeing uh, their properties we are not eyeing their land our help is benign no quid pro quo involved absolutely bang on them and actually and for the for our for we are concerned for the citizens of sri lanka and we we also honor their constitution in our way and that's the reason why uh, we have been taking the pain of reading the constitution of some other country at the same time but think that there are difficult times there are trying times for everyone in sri lanka so for them once again on that note i mean actually with your permission i would like to recite few lines for the people of sri lanka for these difficult times to help them cope with the pressure at least uh yes yes major shah please go ahead when things go wrong as sometimes well when the road you are traveling seems all up hell when the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile but up to sigh when cares pressing you down a bit rest if you must but don't you quit Life is queer with its twists and turns, and all of us sometimes laugh. And many a person turns about when he might have won, had he stuck it out. So don't quit, though the pace seems slow. You may win with another blow. Hmm. Often a struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup, and he learned too late when the night came down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out. The silver tint in the clouds of doubt. So stick to the fight when your hardest hit. It's when things seem worst. You must not quit. And there's light at the end of the end of the tunnel. So I'm sure that you all will overcome this hurdle together. Well, certainly there is no doubt about that, and I think it's a very optimistic note to close this program. Also, on I'd like to thank both of you, uh, Major Shah and Sanjeev uh, Shivasava.